Okay, and welcome to week 10 of the video production course. And uh, we're going to cover something today that we don't always cover in this course, but I thought it would be useful, especially since uh, we're doing so much of the work uh, uh, in editing rather than in shooting. Uh, and also, it's, uh, it's something that's worth, worth understanding if you can add it to your repertoire. And that is effects, color correction, and adjustments. Okay, effects, corrections, and adjustments, more unlimited possibilities. Now to recap, because uh, we've been doing that with these videos, uh, digital video is virtual. Now what virtual means, uh, in a nutshell, as you probably should know, is that uh, the digital file itself does not really exist in the physical world. Uh, it does not exist, and that's, uh, and that's not hyperbole, it's simply true. Uh, the digital video file has no physical substance. It has no physical life. You can't touch it. You can't pick it up. It's information. Now, we, it may exist on a thumb drive, for example. The thumb drive is physical, but the information on it is not. Any idea applied to a digital video file requires no physical process. Now, let me pause on that one for a minute, just so you understand. If you were working with film, uh, if you wanted to do a dissolve, you literally had to make that happen optically. So you would have to project one piece of film in one projector, have another piece of film in another projector, and kind of dim the lights on one projector and bring up the lights on the other to create the fade effect. And then you'd have to record that on another piece of film altogether and then to process that, develop it. And that was a real pain in the butt. And so if you were to do you know, something like a picture-in-picture, picture, you would literally have to cut the film with a razor blade to do that, or at least that's one way you could do it. And there are all kinds of examples of that. Uh, and if you're going to do some kind of a color correction, uh, that literally couldn't be done with film. You had to re-record re it with a filter or something like that. Uh, and of course, if the chemicals go wrong, like the image looks different and that sort of thing. And so literally two pieces of film that are shot in the same camera under the same conditions can look different uh, because it's, it's all physical. You don't really know what's going to happen necessarily. You've got to get off in the same batch. And so the same thing with video. Video, you've got tape, which has a physical substance. And so uh, in order to, uh, uh, to do an effect, you have to have some sort of electronic presence there that's going to make this happen real time. Uh, you can't do it once it's on the tape. You know, it's on the tape as it is. You can't change that. You have to bring it into a machine, which will do something to it, and then you're recording it onto another tape. And so that's a very different thing than what we're talking about now. Uh, here, you can do basically anything with digital video uh, because you can take the file and then basically tell the computer to work on it, and then you will change it. And then if you hit the Save button, that's what the file looks like now. Now, of course, it's, if you're going to do that, you have the option of saving it as a different name, which I would recommend that you do, but you don't have to. So that's the difference what we're talking about now. Now, the concept of effects. Effects are algorithms. Now, we use that word a lot, and to be honest, I'm not even sure we all agree on what the term algorithm means, but let's just say it's some kind of a formula, a series of, of, um, of uh, things that you do, like a checklist of stuff. So let's say that you're going to take every red pixel and make it blue, for example. That could be a kind of an algorithm. And so find everything that's in the red range, whatever is red about it, you change to blue. That would be a kind of an algorithm. That could be an effect. And then that's going to have an effect on the video. Now, these can make sweeping changes to the image. But at the same time, they can be incredibly precise and predictable meaning that if you do the same effect, you know what it's going to do. And so if you apply that to every piece of video, it's going to work the same way for each one of them. And if it doesn't, uh, then you can change it individually. So you can get in there and you can actually nitpick about what the thing does and, and you can do it. Uh, all effects must be calculated. The computer has to think about this. Sometimes it takes time. Now, one thing I didn't mention about that, I, I should add it, but I won't. Uh, is that all effects, all effects, can be undone. So that means if you don't like it, you don't have to live with it. Now, how's that, huh? Now, if you were doing something with film where you actually ran the film through a bleach process or something like that, good luck undoing that. You're done. If you didn't like it, yeah, that's tough. Uh, in fact, 
I knew some idiot. I mean, let me just back up a minute. In, in graduate school, uh, we were assigned these cameras. The cameras had this strobe effect shutter thing that you could turn on. So while you're shooting it, you could have these cool effects. That was basically a consumer camera. And so I knew someone who shot his entire master's project that way. And so the entire project had that effect. The only problem with that is he could just as easily have done that in the editing process. But once it's applied to the tape, you can never unapply it. And so um, all, all of these effects, everything that we're doing with these files, it is it can be undone, redone, undone again. And you can always get back to what you started with if you really need to. Now, the types of effects we're going to talk about. One is color correction. Color correction. Two, audio sweetening. And these are some of the basics, uh, the basic things that you might find yourself doing. Uh, Time-based correction. We'll talk about what that means as we go along. And mood and artistic effects. Those are the four that we're going to start with. Now, we're not going to go into in-depth on all of them, but I just want you to understand uh, what they are. So basically, if we're talking color correction, uh, first of all, if you've overexposed or underexposed, you can fix that with a brightness slash contrast team. You can fix uh, an overexposure. You can change your lighting if the lighting is bad or something like that. Uh, you can also typically affect white balance. Now, that is cool because there was a time when if you didn't white balance your camera, you were stuck. I mean, because pretty much you come in with your tape, you can, you can edit your project from your tapes. At least that's the way I was doing it. But you could never change the video on the tapes. So if you shot your, your project with a, a bad white balance, which is possible to do because the cameras had black and white viewfinders, go figure, uh, then what are you going to do? You have no idea what you're going to do. And so uh, the only possible solution would be to take it to an expensive facility uh, where they can run it through a gigantic $80,000 machine which will allow you to, to make some of these, these very same adjustments we can now do here for nothing. So that's important to understand. Uh, color balance, not just white balance, but you can get right in there and you can do all kinds of incredible things to the color. So let's say you've got some very old film footage. It's all red. You can, you can undo years of color, uh, color dyes fading uh, with uh, just adjust, make some relatively simple adjustments. Okay, audio, noise reduction. Uh, audio has a lot of problems, a lot of things that you experience in audio. We're gonna do a whole separate video on this, but uh, audio is sometimes more important than video. Let's say you've got a radiator going in the background that you never figured out how to shut off. Maybe you didn't even notice it, but then when you play it back, you hear this in the background, you might be able to do something with that with a noise production, noise reduction. Uh, filter. Uh, or if there is a, uh, a constant hissing sound, maybe you can get rid of that. Or even, even something that's nondescript, like running water. Maybe you can. Equalization. Uh, if, the, if someone talks with a particularly bassy voice and you want to bring that down a little bit, you can. Uh, or let's say there's a high frequency hum somewhere and you can isolate exactly the frequency that it's on. You can pull that out. You can get rid of that. It's very easy. Multi-track adjustments. So you've got your stereo audio. You can do a trace where the where uh, you can hear somebody talking on this side versus this side. Uh, you can make something appear to be moving across the room, that sort of thing. Uh, spectral editing. If during, you like that sound there. Uh, if during your, your video, this a bell goes off, you can actually find exactly where that bell is on the spectrum and you can paint it out of the spectrum, in which case that bell disappears. Now, the problem is it's going to take everything with it that sounds like the bell. Now, most of the time, if the bell is an unusual, it's a, it's a sound that's it's not really associated with the rest of your audio, you're not going to notice that. But every once in a while, it becomes an issue. And reverb. This is something that you can add to enhance audio, make it sound stronger. Uh, and it does other things as well. Time base. Uh, this has to do with changing frame rate. So you can slow down or speed up video, for example. You can reverse video, play it backwards, and you can invert it, make it go left to right instead of right to left, and you can turn it upside down. And all those things would be under the 
category of time base. Uh, and those are things that come up. And when they come up, they come up. Sometimes you got to do that. Okay. And of course, the artistic effects, that's an easy one. Just about anything. This, uh, the program comes with loads of them, some of which you will probably never use. And there's also a whole other program, Adobe After Effects, that allows you to do far more, which we'll get into. Now, what can effects not do? This is kind of important to understand. You cannot fix focus problems. So far, I have never yet found a situation you can do that. If, you, if your camera is out of focus, that's it. That's the one thing that I simply don't know a way you can fix. All you can do is refocus the camera and shoot it again. If you're not willing to do that, I can't help you. So if you got blurry footage, uh, you may be able to put like a sharpening thing. I think it's not going to do any good, really. It's not going to make much of a difference. Uh, you cannot bring back data that's actually lost. Now, that's, that's a caveat there. Let's say you've overexposed your video and you're clipping the whites. So way up at the top, your waveform monitor is, is maxed out. Uh, and uh, just looking at it, you say, well, there's no data up there. Well, maybe not. Because uh, sometimes if you bring that down, the whites are clipped off at the 110 mark, but they're not at the 100 mark. And so you might be able to get some of that data back. And, and in some cases, I've seen it do miraculous things. And same thing with crushing the blacks. If you've got an incredibly underexposed film or video, sometimes uh, there is detail there that you simply can't see, but it's still there. And so it may not be lost. Uh, but there's a point beyond which you can go. If it is overexposed beyond the point where you can fix it, that's it. It's gone. Uh, you cannot fix bad camera work, at least not completely. Now, they do have a miraculous thing uh, which will take some camera shake out. What it will do is it will basically crop in on the video and it will move the picture to match the camera shake if you let the computer think about it long enough. Now, I'm not going to necessarily say that that's a good idea, but I have seen it work. It's never going to look as good as if you didn't shake the camera in the first place, though. You know, let's be honest. There's only so much you're going to be able to fix. And you cannot enhance resolution that wasn't there. If you shoot something in standard definition video and you try to bump it up to 4K, it's not going to look like 4K. There's just nothing you can do about it because the actual information wasn't there. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Premiere. And I'm just going to take you through a few instances where you might be able to do some good uh, with some of these effects. And so what I have here is a sample timeline in which I put some footage up here, uh, some of which uh, we won't really be looking at. But uh, I have some aerial footage here, for example. And uh, if you can see, as you scrub through the footage, you can see it reflected on the scope as well. And so we have our waveform monitor here and our vector scope here. We're really not going to be using the vector scope all that much. The waveform monitor is the most important one. Now you'll notice that um, you see we've got shadows in the images. So there is darkness there. That's reflected around here. You see the zero line here between zero and 10. That is where your darkness is. Now, fortunately, we have nothing going below zero. Uh, and most of our darkness is right around the 7.5 area, which I would say is quite comfortable. Uh, now, you notice that we have some bright white buildings there. That's what these are. And so overall, I would say that the exposure is not a problem on the aerial footage. We are always going to get some hot spots when we're dealing with white objects, for example. But that's not necessarily a problem. So I'm not going to really claim that there's anything really wrong with that footage, although some areas maybe could use a little help, but we, uh, we may not have time to get to that. So I also wanted to look at a few uh, sample footage that, uh, that was part of a student project. And I wish I could say that they were deliberately told to come up with problematic video, but they actually uh, presented this as, uh, as video. So. First of all, let's say we look at, at this video here. So this is a video of somebody walking across the frame. Now you'll notice, if I pause it there, notice that really, really thick line up there. Everything is really, really overexposed. So essentially what we've got is uh, a lot of detail over the 100% uh, the mark. Now we may not be able to do much about that, but if we take it a little further, 
we can see that immediately once, once she passes the window, it becomes acceptable. So we may be able to correct some of that. We may not be able to. We may be able to get a little detail back. There's also everything is blue. That means that it's been, it's been not properly white balanced, which we might be able to fix that. Maybe not. Here's another example. This is blatantly overexposed and it's uh, off of white balance. Now here, we have the opposite problem. We have someone basically in silhouette. I'm gonna say that we might be able to get more out of the darker areas in this image. You can see, if you look there, we get the bright uh, exposure up here, which is actually moderately well exposed, but we have some detail here we may be able to resurrect. And so if we go over here, uh, this is reasonably well exposed. That's blatantly overexposed. We may try to get something out of that, but I just don't know if we can. And so let's start with uh, let's start with this one. Yeah, with the I guess that's uh, not Spider Man, but the other one. Uh, what was it? The uh, well, I forgot the guy's name. All right, so we can all agree, I hope, that this is overexposed. So what I want to do is I want to apply an effect that will allow me to fix exposure. So I'm gonna close everything here so I can show you where it is. If you look over here under video effects, it's under the effects uh, uh, box. Under video effects, I'm gonna to go to color correction and I'm just gonna take brightness and contrast and I'm gonna drop it right onto that clip. Now the moment I do that, I'll just move this over a little bit, you can see that the effects controls suddenly gets brightness and contrast controls in it. So those controls don't come with it, you've got to ask for them. So I'm going to open up the brightness and the contrast so that I get the little sliders. Now look at the scope here as you move the brightness. If I move the brightness down, the entire video comes down. Now notice how originally there was basically nothing up there. Now suddenly you can see the window frame. So miraculously, I can honestly say that this is uh, better than I thought. Now, the other thing that you can move is the contrast, in which case you can contract and expand uh, the image. Now, if you, if you reduce contrast entirely, you just get gray. But the idea is, if you can, you should be able to frame the shot within the area of acceptable exposure. So let's say that I could even get a little bit more out of that. Let's say that I wanted to have the windows overexposed. Now, if you want to check these, if you look over here, brightness and contrast within the effects controls, if I click the FX button, it will turn off the effect. So that's what the effect turned off. And this is what the effect turned on. I think we have a winner. So we were able to fix that. Now, the one thing that was not broken about this, we did not have a white balance issue. So that's something we didn't have to fix, but we were able to, to do something with the, uh, with the color levels, the, the uh, video levels. So this one, I'm gonna do the same basic thing, because notice we got a lot of exposure up here, maybe crushing the blacks down there. If I take my brightness and contrast, now I'm on this clip, if I open up brightness and I open up contrast, here, if I bring the brightness up, we can see a little bit more of the details. A little bit more of those details. And it's okay to overexpose it a little bit to get those details out. So, and I take the contrast. Really, the way to get that to work is you do have to overexpose it. But again, if I click it off, that's what we started with. Now we got that. I think it's a slight improvement. Okay, so look at this one. We can see that it's got that blue problem. And it's also overexposed. Let's do it with the exposure first. So if I go to video effects and I go to color correction, I'm just going to go to brightness and contrast and drop that in there. And so immediately we get this. And so we got our brightness and our contrast bar. And if I bring down the brightness, you'll see that 
we're getting some detail that we didn't have before. And basically what we have is the, the window frames. And so if I were to try to compress the video and see if I can get it to happily live within the, uh, the acceptable frame, I would say that that's a slight improvement. So if I were to go here and I were to turn off the effect, that's what we started with, that's what we got, I'd say that that's good. Now, for the color correction, uh, there are a few options. Now, I'm going to show you an easy one uh, that uh, I just learned about recently. So I'm going to stay in color corrections, and they hid this relatively well. Uh, but I'm going to show you two of them. Uh, the first one is the one that you might actually want to use. And um, uh, don't tell anyone I told you this, but if you look into the effects... They have this category called obsolete effects. And so under obsolete effects, they have something called fast color correction. They also have auto color. Now, just for the heck of it, let's see what auto color does. I put auto color there. I don't really like the way auto color handled that. So if I go here, so I'm going to take auto color off. But if I go to fast color corrector, I just drop that in. Then, if I look under Fast Color Corrector here, I get this little trick called white balance. And so right now, I get this thing, this eyedropper. Now, here's a really neat trick. If I grab the eyedropper and I tap it on something that I know is white, for example, her sweater or whatever that is, if I click on that, look what happens. Look what happens. I'm going to call that white balanced. So then if I go back, I would say that, again, it's not perfect, but it's, it's certainly better than it was. Okay, so let's, let's say that my principles don't allow me to use an obsolete effect. Well, they put that under, within color correction, they have it under Lumetri color. You know, I'm, who could possibly forget Lumetri color? Okay, so here he is. Here we are. So under Lumetri Color, Basic Color Correction, lo and behold, you've got your white balance selector. So you can do exactly the same thing, except it doesn't work as easily. I actually prefer the other one. So I'm going to see that one. Perhaps her outfit wasn't completely white. I would say that's closer. And there, you can also adjust the temperature a little bit. And you can, there's more to it than this. And you can eventually get it to the point where you like it. I would say it's six of one, half a dozen of the other, and to be honest, I still like the obsolete one a little bit better, uh, but that's uh, neither here nor there. And so, yeah, there's more that you can do here, and you can actually, you can open up every single color there is under the, under the full color correction, but I don't know if we necessarily need to go there if all we're doing is fixing a white balance problem. So I'm going to stick with the two methods that I showed you. So, uh, moving further along, one other thing while we're here, uh, if we want to look at time-based correction, if you go to the clip itself, right-hand click on it, you get all these options. If you decide you want to do something really weird, you grab speed and duration. So, right now it's at 100%. Let's say that I take it down to 30%. Now suddenly the clip gets larger. So if I play this, you can see that everything is playing more slowly because I'm changing the frame rates. So if I go here again, go back to uh, speed duration, and I can make that 300%, but I can also hit reverse speed. Now let's see what it does. So if we play this, now it goes backwards really fast. So not that you'd necessarily want to do that. So I'll go to speed and duration, take it back to 100%, uncheck reverse speed, and so we get our clip back, most of it. And it looks like part of it got chopped off, so you can just stretch it back out again. Okay, so those are some things that you can do. Now, let's go into some of the more artistic ones. So I'm going to go... So the drone footage again. And let's see if we can find an interesting picture. So let's look at Methodist University. 
And I tend to like, I saw it for a second there. Well, back it up a little bit. All right, now I think we had it. All right, so I'm going to go with this view here. So we're looking at the nursing building. So over here, I'm going to close the color correction area, and I'm just going to go over a couple of these visual effects. I'm not necessarily recommending that you use a lot of these because some of these are really stupid, but occasionally you'll find something useful. So let's say that I go to Stylize and I pick Emboss. If I were to grab Emboss and put it on the video, and you see that, uh, I'll use the wrong one. So let's say I grab emboss and I put it on the video. You can see that it makes it look like a coin. Why would you want to do that? I don't know. But you could do that. You could have the entire video play like that if you want to freak people out. But I don't want to do that, so I'm going to get rid of that. Now, another thing that you might find useful, if you go to, uh, let's say you go to image control and you grab your black and white, you can immediately turn this into a black and white image if you want to do that. Or you can delete it and it's not black and white anymore. Under distort, you have all kinds of crazy things that you can do, most of which uh, you might not want to use. However, we do have this one thing, spherize. Let's say if I put spherize there, I don't know if it heard me, if I dump spherize on there, yeah, got two of them, so I'll get rid of one. So spherize, if you look at the image, we've got a bubble, a bubble in the video. So it has the effect of a lens and you can even move the lens across the image and you can animate that if you want to. So why would you want to do such a thing? Well, I don't know, but you can. And so that's an example of some of these effects that you might want to use under generate. You've got lens flare, which if you do that, you've got your beautiful lens flare. And so you see you can, you can control where the lens flare goes. So brightness, and you can you move it around like that. Now, why would you want to do that? Uh, in case you wanted to you know, do some sort of a Hollywood video or you know, you're selling cars or something like that. You know, those are all some of the possibilities that you might want to use. So, uh, there you go. There's all kinds of things you can do, whether they're good or not. And again, I'm not saying to overuse these, but I do want you to have the ability to understand how they do work.